describe for people who haven't read the electrification roadmap, uh, the PDF, and I forget how many pages it is, but it's a substantial amount of, of document there. Sort of describe for us in a nutshell, what is your vision of this electrification roadmap? When looking at electrification, what, what most concerned us was the deployment strategy. And when looking at the deployment of hybrids, um, we have about 1.6 uh, million uh, hybrids um, on the roads today, but there's 250 million other vehicles, yeah. and it's taken 10 years to get there. Yeah. And so for us, looking at the national security implications, that is just an unacceptable uh, trade-off. And if that's sort of the route that electrification will go and electric cars will go, fully electric or plug-in, uh, that, is, that is unacceptable and that's not good. So what we are trying to think is how to make um, the electric vehicle not become a niche market for enthusiasts right. um, and, and so how do you get beyond that. And what we came up with was that instead of sprinkling these cars throughout the country, um, what we really needed to do was concentrate the infrastructure deployment and the car deployment on a mass scale um, in, in certain geographic regions. Now we believe that those regions should be caught, should be chosen through a very competitive uh, bid process, similar to like an Olympic bid, where you have to, you know, when you bid for the Olympics, you have to say where you're going to house the athletes, not just where they're going to where they're going to ski or skate or whatever, but where you're going to house them, how people are going to get around, how you're going to feed people, right. and the sa same thing here. And there's a very complicated task. And if you create a race to the top between communities. Uh, they'll be willing um, ultimately to do a lot of the steps that are needed to try to outbid one another. And if they're chosen as an ecosystem, they would get additional incentives, both on the infrastructure side and on the vehicle side, which would, of course, the market would drive um, into those areas where you'd have mass penetration. And really getting beyond early adopters because of having that mass penetration um, would provide, you know, really that uh, proof of concept um, for the country if you had six um, and they see how it interacts with the grid and how this can work and it doesn't have to be early adopters, you would have much more and quicker penetration in the rest of the country. So that was really the fundamental idea of the roadmap was, you know, let's focus, just as they're doing today, right? I mean, the, you know, uh, the Department of Energy and uh, the companies are choosing places they're willing to deploy first. So what we're trying to do is in some ways, okay, that's, that is the right strategy, but there should be additional incentives to make sure that the deployment is, uh, is, is large scale beyond early adopters right away. And once we see that value proposition, we'll, we'll expand throughout the country. So we call it an electrification ecosystem um, as, as it's chosen, and hopefully the ones that put forward the best plans and they'll have to come in with their PUCs and with their utilities and with their largest employers, and hopefully they'll have to change their laws, uh, whether they be uh, building codes and inspection codes and all these things that have to happen. Yeah. Um, and there will be a race to the top, and not all of them will be chosen, but many of them will already take the steps in order to try to be chosen. Uh, for these additional incentives. Now, the last thing I'd just say is there are policies that are beyond the uh, ecosystem that are just national policies that we should do, um, that they include uh, residual value for uh, the battery once its life in the vehicle is over, and that helps bring down the cost, um, you know, uh, loan guarantees uh, for companies, um, warranty issues that are uh, necessary in, a, in, in an electric vehicle different than an uh, internal combustion engine. But I, I would say what the headline is is really this idea of uh, a penetration in these geographic areas from right. ecosystems. What kind of traction then are you getting with, you know, you've got, uh, as a matter of fact, today, uh, people that there's like 115,000 people that have sort of been hand raisers, as Mark Perry at Nissan puts it, and said, we'd like to get on the list, the reservation for this, so that people can sign up for that actually today. Um, you've got, of course, the Volt rolling out, and um, I was told that Tony Pozowitz is somewhere in town here today to talk to, to Jigger. So you've got those efforts going on where they're sort of picking those markets where they're going to deploy. So how much sort of liaison is there? I mean, how much, between your group, which is advocating these policies and these sort of Olympic type selection process for these cities, and you know what the car makers are doing. And then of course, the part of that also has to do with you know government involvement and things. So kind of where are you at? I mean, you proposed this, and that's been several months ago, so sort of where are you at in the process now? Well, the Electrification Coalition is made up of CEOs of many of the companies that you uh, talk about. So uh, the idea was to bring together CEOs on the entire value chain of electrification, whether from the uh, holders of lithium reserves to the utilities to infrastructure, smart grid, car maker, battery maker, and then user. Right. Um, and so some car companies um, are involved, and other ones we have uh, regular uh, contact, uh, contact with. 
Um, really, I think it's essential for us, uh, as we are in Washington, to uh, work the political process in order to create the legislation to allow these bids and for the money to be um, appropriated or in the tax code to, to get these additional incentives. So that is what we spend our time doing. Um, and hopefully there'll be legislation introduced in the coming uh, weeks, um, both in the Senate and in the House, bipartisan and bicameral, and, uh, and we'll see if we can uh, and get, that, get, that, get that passed. Within the communities themselves, we're agnostic on who actually uh, gets chosen. I mean, that is the kiss of death in Washington to have pre-selected, and right. it's not for us to do anyways, and hopefully right. there will be a race to the top where everyone wants to compete. Um, in the education dollar uh, grant that they just had, where it was a race to the top, they put out $4 billion in 40 states, changed their laws, that no one could get any of them to change just to get $4 billion. So, yeah. you know, that is, that is, a, that is our hope. But we, we are in contact with the various cities who are interested because they've seen our plan and, and trying to uh, be uh, more and more involved on the ground in those places. It's we can change uh, laws, we can change technology, but probably the hard part here of this whole thing is sort of the soft changes that have to take place. Policy we can you know, we can do, mm -hmm. but people right. is 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 the real challenge here because we have these sort of built-in perceptions of what we think an automobile should be and how it should operate and the you know functionality and services it should provide. So how do you how are you guys looking at that? How are you addressing that sort of soft issue of getting people to change their thinking about what kind of services an automobile should be delivering to them. You know, in our roadmap, we identified four major challenges. Uh, the first being battery and vehicles, of course, cost of the battery being the most important. The second being infrastructure and business models for the infrastructure, which is very difficult in the, in the um, sort of current model of how much you charge for electricity and sort right. of the payback and return on investment. A third was um, how the charging and the grid and the car interact with one another. There's a dumb way to charge in a very smart way. And one right. would be helpful to the country and one will be very right. potentially uh, harmful uh, from national security. And then finally, it's the consumer, which is really, as you say, one of the most important things. Um, and and, and we, we, we have major concerns and our policies are written to help us uh, get over that those challenges as well. Um, so for example, um, I would say that one of the reasons we believe there should be these deployment communities and you need mass scale deployment, not just 5,000 cars here and 5,000 cars there in different cities, but 50,000 cars, mm -hmm. is that allows you to get over the early adopters right away. So it's not that you or I will buy those Nissan Leafs or those uh, Chevy Volts, uh, that's obvious. But it's, uh, or, and, or that Prius owners will then go and upgrade their Prius for an electric car, that's also obvious. But it's the guy down the block who would never think of this. And you have to get them in the vehicles right away, yeah. or you're stuck in that trough. You got to get over the hump, and the only way is to make these cars competitive through government incentives and others in those areas. You can't do it in the whole country, so this allows you to do that. So those guys see the those those, those type of purchasers see the benefit because of them. They don't really care what the fuel is, as long as it's cost competitive and it does what I need it to do. And and you can make that happen um, if the government at this early stage, you know, gets involved. In the